Hi everyone. My name is Jim Meyer. I'm a math teacher with the Seattle Public Schools, and I wanted to begin this video by inviting you to an exercise in gratitude. I know these are difficult times, and I wanted you to think about all the things that you miss. So I invite you to make a list of things that you miss. Maybe you miss hanging out with your friends. Maybe you miss going to school. And when things go back to normal, I want to remind you to be grateful for those things. Maybe you didn't think about them as being important to you before or just how valuable they were. But when we miss something, it helps us think about how important they are. And that can help us be more grateful in our everyday lives. Okay. Hopefully our everyday lives will get back to us soon. But in the meantime, let's get on with this math video. Uh, we are going to take a look at some of the which one didn't belong or doesn't belong responses that we got from last episode. Uh, we're going to look at some of the ideas that people sent in about the questions from last episode. We're going to continue to talk about equality today. And then we have a reading. I want to read a book by Deming called One Grain of Rice, which I think is really important in these days. Um, it's going to help us understand how quickly things can grow. And right now, we're trying to stop this virus from growing. And I just thought about this book when I thought about how fast things can spread if we're not careful. Okay, well, let's get started by looking at last week's... Someone named Pilar, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, I'm really sorry if I'm not, wrote in and said, I think that B doesn't belong because the squares are not touching side to side. They're touching corner to corner. So I, I, I see here that the sides are here, and in a lot of them, the sides are touching, like we can see that here, or see that here in D. But with figure B, only the corners are touching. Okay, I can see that. That makes sense. Amir wrote and said, I think A doesn't belong because it only has three legs, and all the others have four legs. Okay, okay, I can definitely see that. Right there, are, the others look something like this. They make an X pattern or a plus pattern, whereas this one does not. Hannah wrote in and said, I think C and D don't belong because they don't have a starting place in the middle. True, true. I'm looking right here, there's, there is no sort of uh, tile that would start the pattern. It's empty in the middle. So it's missing one that maybe some of the others are not. And Deshaun wrote in, I think C is different because it's growing at a different speed. Hmm. So the others added one plus one plus one. C was doubling from one to two to four. So let's see if we can highlight that. Looks like the others, uh, each time there's a pattern, like for example, A would add one, and then add another one, and then add another one. I think that's true of the others also. So B added one, and then added another one, and then took those two and added another one. So I think that's what Deshaun means when he says the others are adding one plus one plus one. But C was doubling, so C starts out at one, and then it goes to two, and then it goes to four. And that's different. All right, nice, nicely done. So it looks like there are many different answers here. Everyone could find something that was different about each of these figures. So the important thing with this activity, which one doesn't belong, is not that you're getting the right answer, it's that you're thinking about patterns and changes and differences between patterns and changes of A and B and C and D. You're thinking mathematically. All right, great. So this week's routine is a little different than last week's. We'll call this one a unit chat. And I'm gonna ask a simple question, which is how many do you see? I'm gonna show an image on the screen 
and I'd like you to think about how many you see. Now remember, if you're watching with friends and family, which I hope you are, you might have different answers. So please respect each other's opinions, listen to each other's ideas, and you might, you might find that everyone can be right. Okay, so here we go. How many do you see? So these are some images that people sent in in response to our question from last week. What other fractions are equal to one? So let's take a look. This is from Michael. Um, he's pointed out that five-fifths equals one whole. I, I think that's the idea here is that one-fifth plus one-fifth plus one-fifth plus one-fifth plus one-fifth equals five-fifths. And we see that the whole bar is shaded in. Here's something, an image from Angele, picture of a piece of toast cut into 12 pieces. And it looks like all pieces, all 12 pieces or 12 twelfths are shaded in. And she's noted that she ate one piece of toast. So 12 twelfths also equals one. I think that means that 12 twelfths and five fifths might be equivalent. But remember last week I mentioned that there was a caveat, there was a, an exception to this rule. And that is that we have to be talking about the same thing. So one piece of toast doesn't necessarily equal one, say, candy bar or one bar. When you're talking about fractions, or really when you're talking about adding anything or comparing anything, you've got to make sure that you're talking about the same unit. For example, one apple doesn't equal one gallon of milk. One doesn't always equal one, unless you're talking about the same unit. The toast and the bar are not equal. But if we're just talking about the same thing, I could also say that Angela ate five-fifths of a piece of toast, and that would be the same amount of toast. Or that Michael shaded in 12 twelfths of this bar, and it would still be the whole bar. Okay, so last week we saw that two halves equals one. We saw that three thirds equals one. We saw that five fifths equals one. Michael shared that with us this week, and we also saw that 12 twelfths, thanks to Angela, we saw that 12 twelfths equals one. We also last week talked about SMP8, the standard of math practice eight, which asks us to look for repetition. It asks us to learn to seek out patterns and use those patterns to make predictions. So for example, I wanna invite you to think about a pattern you see here in all these fractions that are equivalent to one. And, and see if that helps you make a rule for all fractions that are equivalent to one. For example, if I wrote 64 60 fourths and asked you what that fraction was equivalent to, I'm guessing you would say one. When we see the numerator and the denominator are equivalent to each other, we've colored in all 64 of the 64 pieces of our candy bar or our toast that we've colored in the whole thing. And one thing that we need to remember is that we need is that all of these have to be the same thing. Right? If if we ate two halves of a pizza, that is not equal to eating two halves of a candy bar. All right. Let's see if we can use SMP8 to learn something about other fractions. Let's talk about fractions that are equivalent to one half. So I could color in one half of this bar, and one half of this bar, and one half of this bar. And I hope you see that these are all equivalent quantities, right? They are the same amount. Let's just assume that we're talking about a candy bar here. But they're divided up into different portions, so they make different fractions. For example, our first fraction is equal to one half. Our second fraction 
oops, excuse me, is equal to 2 fourths. And our third fraction is equal to 3 sixths. And I'm just going to rewrite that real quick. I think I need to give myself some more space. So I want you to think about a pattern that we might see here. What's some pattern that's repeating that helps us see all these fractions as being equal to one half? Well, it might help to look at how one half becomes three six to begin with. So here I see that there are two pieces altogether that become six pieces altogether. So we think about how did two become six? Well, we could have just added four, but we're not adding four to the part that's shaded in, right? So let's try a different idea. Let's think about tripling. I have three times as many pieces, and there are three times as many shaded in, right? The shaded in parts. One became three, right? One became three. And just like two whole pieces became six pieces in the whole. Let's see if that pattern holds true here. Uh, I see I have one, I started with one piece and that turned into two pieces. One became two. If I multiply by two or double it, that works out. Let's see if it works for the denominator. I used to have two whole pieces that became four pieces. Again, the doubling works. So we're starting to see a pattern here. Right? If we multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same factor, we seem to get an equivalent fraction. Let's see if it works for turning one half into one half. What factor could we multiply both of these by? We see one. One times one is one, two, two times one is two, and it even works when the factor is equal to itself. Now, we want to put a name to this pattern. What is this repeated pattern? Because it doesn't really look the same, like, oh, sometimes I multiply by three, sometimes I multiply by two. What we're really doing is that we are always multiplying by one, right? Think back to our lesson from last week, right? These are all fractions that are equivalent to one. And you know what happens when you multiply by one. The quantity stays the same, right? So let's try this with some other fractions. Let's see if we can think of other fractions that are equal to one half. We already see that one half is equal to two fourths. We multiply by one. Could I multiply two fourths by something else? To get another equivalent fraction? Sure, as long as that what we're multiplying by is 1. So let's think of something. Let's try 5 fifths. 2 times 5 would be 10. 4 times 5 would be 20. Do we think that 10 twentieths is also 1 half? It should be. It's following our pattern. It's following our pattern of multiplying by 1. And we can check by doing this simple thing. Let's take, let's take our 10 twentieths and do something like this. Let's divide by one. What happens when you divide a number by one? It should remain the same. So let's see if it remains, if this, we can make this equal to one half to see if it is equivalent all the way down. 10 divided by 10 and 20 divided by, that's right, 10 would equal one half. So here we have a bunch of equivalent fractions that all look different. We have one half, we have two fourths, we have 10 twentieths. And as long as we can multiply or divide any one of them by one and get the other, they will be equivalent. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Anik and I have been playing dots and boxes, but you're going to notice something different about this game. We've added numbers to the boxes, we've mathematized the game, and you might see where this is going, right? When you capture a box, you're going to add the contents of that box, whether it's adding or subtracting, to your score. One of the things that makes this variation more uh, interesting is that we're going to play by the rules that if you capture a box, you have to take another turn. 
Okay, so Annika, it's your turn. Go ahead and pick up where we left off. Yep, Annika captured a two. She's gonna mark the box with her initials so we know who's got it. In case you lose track, you can go back and add up the scores and she's gonna take another turn. Now she's gotta avoid capturing negative numbers or try anyway. All right, now I'm gonna see if I can capture a positive. Mm, no. Oh, Annika just captured a negative number. And a positive number. That was a great move because minus one and positive one cancel each other out. Now she's got to take another turn. All right, so I'm going to take this move. I'm going to subtract one. Even though I don't have anything yet, you might wonder to yourself, what is nothing or zero minus one? But I get to go again. I'm going to capture the positive three. I have a total score of two. So this is how we've mathematized this game. And I wanted to show you some other variations too. If you play it like this, you can also go a little crazy and add in some multiplication and division. So we can maybe, uh, multiply by two. We might be able to even multiply by three to really turbo boost your scores. We can divide by three. Division gets a little crazy because there might be some remainders. So be careful with division. But here we go. That's the extension or how to mathematize the game dots and boxes. So the next thing I'd like to do is read a book called A Single Grain of Rice by an author named Demi. This is a beautiful book. It's a mathematical book. Um, but it's also very relevant. Uh, I mentioned earlier we're going to talk about, or this book talks about, how quickly things can grow. And we can think about that while we're working to stay home and stay away from other people. Also, I want to ask you to think about the pattern that you see in the book. The book takes place over a period of 30 days. And about halfway through, maybe consider stopping the video and seeing if you can predict where the pattern will end up after 30 days. One Grain of Rice by Demi, a mathematical folktale. For Jan Stewart, who gave to me her love of India. Long ago in India, there lived a Raja who believed that he was wise and fair, as a Raja should be. The people in his province were rice farmers. The Raja decreed that everyone must give nearly all of their rice to him. I will store it nice and safely, the Raja promised the people, so that in a time of famine, everyone will have rice to eat and no one will go hungry. Each year, the Raja's rice collectors gathered nearly all of the people's rice and carried it away to the royal storehouses. For many years, the rice grew well. The people gave nearly all of their rice to the Raja, and the storehouses were always full. But the people were left with only just enough rice to get by. Then, one year, the rice grew badly, and there was famine and hunger. The people had no rice to give the Raja, and they had no rice to eat. The Raja's ministers implored him, Your Highness, let us open the royal storehouses and give the rice to the people, as you promised. No, cried the Raja. How do I know how long this famine may last? I must have the rice for myself. Promise or no promise, a Raja must not go hungry. Time went on, and the people grew more and more hungry. But the Raja would not give out the rice. One day, the Raja ordered a feast for himself and his court. As it seemed to him, a Raja should, now and then even when there is a famine. A servant led an elephant from a royal storehouse to the palace carrying two full baskets of rice. A village girl named Ronnie 
saw a trickle of rice was falling from one of the baskets. Quickly, she jumped up and walked along beside the elephant, catching the falling rice in her skirt. She was clever, and she began to make a plan. At the palace, a guard cried out, Halt, thief, where are you going with that rice? I am no thief, Ronnie replied. This rice fell from one of the baskets, and I am returning it now to the Raja. When the Raja heard about Ronnie's good deed, he asked his ministers to bring her before him. I wish to reward you for returning what belongs to me, the Raja said to Ronnie. Ask me for anything and you shall have it. Your Highness, said Ronnie, I do not deserve any reward at all, but if you wish, you may give me one grain of rice. Only one grain of rice, exclaimed the Raja. Surely you allow me to reward you more plentifully, as a Raza, sh Raza should. Very well, said Ronnie. If it pleases your highness, you may reward me in this way. Today, you'll give me a single grain of rice. Then, each day for 30 days, you will give me double the rice you gave me the day before. Thus, tomorrow, you'll give me two grains of rice. The next day, four grains of rice. And so on for 30 days. This seems still to be a modest reward, said the Raja, but you shall have it and Ronnie was presented with a single grain of rice. The next day, Ronnie was presented with two grains of rice. And the following day, Ronnie was presented with four grains of rice. On the ninth day, Ronnie was presented with 256 grains of rice. She had received in all 511 grains of rice, only enough for a small handful. This girl is honest, but not very clever, thought the Raja. She would have gained more rice by keeping what fell into her skirt. On the twelfth day, Ronnie received 2,048 grains of rice, about four handfuls. On the thirteenth day, she received 496 grains of rice, enough to fill a bowl. On the 16th day, Ronnie was presented with a bag containing 32,768 grains of rice. Altogether, she had enough for two full bags. Hmm, this doubling up adds to more rice than I expected, thought the Raja. But surely her reward won't amount to much more. On the 20th day, Ronnie was presented with 16 more bags filled with rice. On the 21st day, she received 1,048,576 grains of rice. That's enough to fill one basket. On the 24th day, Ronnie was presented with 8,388,608 grains of rice, enough to fill eight baskets, which were carried to her by eight royal deer. On the 27th day, 32 Brahma bulls were needed to deliver 64 baskets of rice. The Raja was deeply troubled. One grain of rice has grown very great indeed, he thought, but I shall fulfill the reward to the end, as a Raja should. On the 29th day, Ronnie was presented with the contents of two royal storehouses. On the 30th and final day, 256 elephants crossed the province, carrying the contents of the last four royal storehouses. 536,870,912 grains of rice.
Altogether, Ronnie had received more than one billion grains of rice. The Raja had no more rice to give. And what will you do with this rice, said the Raja, with a sigh, now that I have none? I shall give it to all the hungry people, said Ronnie, and I shall leave a basket of rice for you too, if you promise, from now on, to only take as much as you need. I promise, said the Raja. And for the rest of his days, the Raja was truly wise and fair, as a Raja should be. From one grain of rice to one billion. Each day, Ronnie received double the amount of rice as the day before. See how quickly one grain of rice doubles into so much more. <laughs>